Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, unity in diversity is the hallmark, legacy and the very identity of our nation. Our beloved state Goa manifests this variety through its incredible natural beauty with amazing waterfalls, green forests, fabulous beaches and architectural masterpieces. Amidst this nature's splendor, our greatest treasure is the Goan community, living and celebrating a harmonious blend of different cultures and religions. Our Archbishop, Most Reverend Philip Neri Ferrand, through his pastoral letter with the theme, You Are My Witnesses, recognizes the value of the esteemed presence of the people of other faiths and ideologies within our state and in our parishes. He gives a personal call to every Catholic faithful to bear witness to Jesus by making sincere efforts to promote a meaningful dialogue with people of all beliefs. With an earnest desire to make this dialogue effective, enriching and enduring during this pastoral year, we have divided this session into four parts. First, what is interreligious dialogue? Why it is necessary? Second, interreligious dialogue, biblical inspiration and church teachings. Third, our efforts towards fostering dialogue. And fourth, our future vision and mission. I will reflect with you on the first part, whereas the other three parts will be dealt by three members of the Committee for the Apostolate of Interreligious Dialogue in an Archdiocese. First, what is interreligious dialogue? Why is it necessary? Friends, human beings are on a common pilgrimage searching for true happiness and fulfillment. This calls us to acknowledge our relational nature. The very word religion, which comes from Latin religare, means to bind again or to foster a relationship and the quality of the relationship depends on the depth of our knowledge of our dialogue partners. Secularism, which is enshrined in the preamble of our constitution, mandates every citizen to accept, respect and protect one another's religious identity, values, and teachings. This will promote brotherhood and harmony in the society. Since we are all one in the same humanity, dialogue with people of other faiths calls us to acknowledge, accept, and value every person's human dignity. It invites us to have an integral knowledge about their beliefs and practices so that we are respectful and sensitive to them. However, we have to be cautious that our quest to build relationship does not lead us to compromise in any way our own beliefs and values. Rather, one who enters into dialogue with the other has to be first firmly rooted in one's own faith. As Pope Francis says, Dialogue does not mean giving up your identity as a Christian. On the contrary, true openness means remaining firm in one's deepest convictions and therefore being open to understanding others. Such a grounded and meaningful dialogue is necessary, firstly for mutual enrichment, wherein the shared encounter enlightens the dialogue partners to appreciate each other's inherent virtues. Secondly, it helps to promote understanding of the beliefs of other faiths. Finally, it builds trust and a collaborative spirit to venture into common concerns affecting humanity. Second, inter-religious dialogue, biblical inspiration, and church teachings. Dear friends, for Catholic faithful, the call to dialogue is grounded 
in the creation narrative which highlights the blessing of God on all humans. He said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1, 26-28 Hence, the value of human does not reside in one's particular religious affiliations, but in the fact that we all share in the image and likeness of God. In the New Testament, the very mystery of Jesus' incarnation, God becoming human, bears witness to a total self-emptying of God in order to involve into an intimate divine human dialogue. The Incarnation is not just a historical event or a mere mystery. It has definitive mission and goal, the salvation of the whole world. This redemptive mission was not restricted to only a few selected but it had a universal character based on love. Love leads God to send His Son for the liberation of all. As Saint John says at the very beginning of his Gospel, For God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not die but have eternal life. John 3, 16 In his life and ministry, Jesus shows that his love, care, concern transcend the boundaries of culture and tradition. We find Jesus entering into a meaningful dialogue with the Samaritan woman at the well. The Canaanite woman and the Roman centurion. All these three were in some way different from the Jewish religion in which Jesus was born. He not only blesses them with the gift of healing, but even goes on to highly commend the Roman centurion for his faith by saying to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel I have found such faith. Matthew 8.10 Inspired by the life of Jesus and heeding to his mandate, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. The Catholic Church desires to collaborate with all people of goodwill. In her teachings on relationship with non-Christians, the Church seeks to bear witness to her own faith by acknowledging, preserving and encouraging the spiritual and moral truths found in the social life and culture of other faiths. Vatican II document, Nostra Etate, number 2. Speaking to the representatives of different religions, Pope Francis said the religions have to be wombs of life, bearing the merciful love of God to a wounded and needy humanity. They are doors of hope, helping to penetrate the walls erected by pride and fear. The Church in Goa is convinced that the best way to fulfill her role as a sign and instrument of communion with God and people is by promoting dialogue with people of other religions, thereby collaborating in building a new society. This can be achieved through a fourfold dialogue. Dialogue of life, dialogue of action, 
Dialogue of Theological Exchange and Dialogue of Re Religious Experience Statement of the Diocesan Synod Numbers 185 and 192 Third, our efforts towards promoting dialogue Friends, being enlightened by the Word of God and under the guidance of the Church teachings we made efforts to bear witness to Jesus among our brethren of other faiths. This ministry was carried on three different levels, namely parish, institutional and diocesan. First, at the parish level. At the very outset, we acknowledge the traditional friendly relationship that exists among Catholics and people of other faiths in our parishes. Without any religious discrimination, people amicably participate in each other's festivals, celebrations and also share in each other's sufferings. Many of our pastors have become great motivators of this togetherness and interfaith living. They have broadened the scope of their pastoral visitation by visiting non-Christian families residing in their parishes especially on the occasion of funerals, religious ceremonies and major festivals. Some of our priests invited us to conduct formative sessions for the parish pastoral council members, youth and catechists to facilitate and train them to promote inter-religious dialogue. With pastoral zeal and initiative from our priests and lay faithful, we had interfaith meetings in some of our parishes on occasions of national importance, example, the Independence Day. With a sincere desire to foster community spirit among religions, celebrations were held on the occasion of main festivals of the Hindus and the Muslims residing in our parishes. Second, at the institutional level. After our homes, schools are the founding temples where young minds imbibe values that mold their character. We conducted formative sessions, especially for teachers, to motivate them to make religious harmony as one of the basic thrusts of education. Also, through the organization of interfaith meetings, students were able to interact and understand the shared values among religions and also to clarify misunderstandings about other faiths. Authentic knowledge of the main tenets, beliefs and practices of one another's religion contributes immensely towards promoting dialogue. In this regard, quiz competitions, posters and skit presentations, national integration songs on various religious themes served as effective channels. Third, at the diocesan level, good leadership enhances productivity. Programs were held to form animators and to create resources for enhancing communal harmony. Keeping in view the secular principles of our constitution and to safeguard religious freedom, symposiums were quite resourceful. Mutual organization and participation in inter-religious meetings not only promoted friendly relations but also paved the way to raise issues of common concerns and to make efforts to address them in a collaborative spirit. Sharing not just in sorrows but also in each other's joys is an integral feature of witnessing. Hence, people from different faiths in a spirit of togetherness joined in a common celebration of one of the major festivals of different religions. 4. Our future vision and mission. Brothers and sisters, it is our conviction that the future vision and mission of our apostolate need to strengthen our efforts and commitment on three levels that we have just reflected upon. This will make our ministry of dialogue comprehensive, progressive and effective. Hence, trusting in everyone's collaboration, we would like to draw a plan of action with special focus on the current pastoral year. 
at the parish level. One of the challenges that we have encountered in recent times is the emergence of an atmosphere of reciprocal suspicion generated by people with vested interest. They try to destroy friendly relations that exist in our neighborhoods with people of all faiths. We all need to join hands to conscientize one another not to fall prey to such people with malicious intentions. It is essential to revive and rejuvenate our way of living permeated with genuine love and trust. In this regard, our small Christian communities under the guidance of our pastors can play a decisive role. Interreligious dialogue is one of the six priorities in the pastoral plan of our archdiocese. Some of our parishes have interreligious dialogue groups to coordinate interfaith dialogue. Our concerted efforts can help to have such cells in all our parishes. They could facilitate the efficacy of dialogue by using different modalities like common celebration of festivals, study sessions on basic tenets of religions, participation in the social issues, etc. At the institutional level, our Archdiocese is blessed with a great number of educational institutions. They offer a wide scope for promoting dialogue. We envisage that through formative sessions, both teachers and students could be enlightened about the value of diversity of religions and the necessity of a dialogue to appreciate the inherent richness of values and to clear prejudices. These will strengthen the secular fabric of our nation and help to promote a society of mutual respect, peace and brotherhood. We recognize the important contribution of the parents teachers associations in the integral well-being of our educational institutions. We hope to utilize their services in the formation of interreligious cells which would coordinate promotion of interreligious dialogue and communal harmony in each educational institution. At the diocesan level, Jesus went in search of the lost and the least. He showed special concern for the ostracized. In our quest to witness him, we need to expand our care towards the marginalized brethren of different religions. For example, migrants, prisoners, sick and those in distress. In recent times, certain social issues have emerged wherein injustice is being fomented on religious lines. There is a greater need to show our solidarity with the oppressed and victims of injustice. Our Archbishop in his pastoral letter stresses that dialogue serves as a potent means of dispelling misunderstandings and knowing the mindset and beliefs of other faiths. In this regard, development of fora for friendly and effective discussions on common theological issues seem to be essential to create an atmosphere of peace, unity and justice. In our diocese, various centers and commissions diligently serve towards the faith formation of our lay faithful through short and long term courses. We intend to collaborate with these bodies so that they could include the topic of religious harmony or interreligious dialogue in their formation programs. For example, courses for the Kathkis, youth, etc. Brothers and sisters, in conclusion, we are thankful to God that our pastors, lay faithful, as well as people of other faiths, have shown a lot of enthusiasm and commitment towards promotion of interfaith dialogue. May God continue to guide and help us through His Spirit to continue witnessing 
to Jesus among people of other beliefs. Thank you. God bless you.